All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're gonna just take another minute to make sure all of our attendees can get into the Tiger Talk this evening. So just bear with us, we'll get started momentarily. All right, good evening. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, greetings from Clemson, greetings from Tigertown. My name is Josh Barnes um, and I work here in student affairs specifically with our orientation and family programs here at Clemson University. Uh, I wanna welcome you to another round of Tiger Talk. For today's agenda, we've got a great program for you. Um, we're gonna be doing, I'll do a quick welcome and an overview. We'll introduce our panelists. Uh, we'll do presentations uh, followed by some question and answer sessions. Um, and then we'll have words of advice from our orientation ambassadors regarding student life here at Clemson. And then we'll have closing remarks for today's session. Um, just quickly about, um, uh, about our Tiger Talks, if, you're, if this is your first time joining us. Uh, today, we're gonna be um, introducing student life here at Clemson. Uh, being involved on campus is an extremely important element uh, for the overall success of uh, students, uh, for the overall success of your student. Uh, there's a lot of research out there than data that says that students who are involved are more, much more likely to persist. They're much more likely to be satisfied and happier on college, uh, at college. And of course, important to the audience, uh, they're more, more likely to graduate on time, uh, which is a real big plus here. So, um, so you'll be hearing from the following departments, Campus Recreation, Fraternity of Story Life, Campus Reservations and Events, the Gantt Multicultural Center, and the Center for Student Leadership and Engagement. And we have a, a, a four or five special student leaders, our orientation ambassadors who will also be joining us um, as a part of this session. Um, just uh, be mindful, this is a Zoom webinar, which means your, your videos and microphones have been unmuted uh, to ensure a high quality experience for everyone. We do hope that we are free from technical issues today, but if we do experience them, please be patient. We'll work as quickly as we can to get those resolved. Um, also of important note, this session is being recorded and it will be made available for future reference um, in the family and parent portal in the next few days. A little bit about our question and answer feature. Again, if you're the first, if, it's, if, if you're returning, you're, you're well aware of how to work this, if this is your first one. Uh, there is a Q&A feature um, on your toolbar. You just look for the two word bubbles with a Q&A under it. At any point in time, you can drop a question in there and our panelists will either answer them, um, will type back and answer them or we will answer them live in session. Uh, we do ask that questions remain relevant to the topic at hand today, which is student life here at Clemson. Um, but as always, we are, well, we, we are here to help and we wanna answer any and all questions that you may have. So if you have other questions that are not necessarily about student life, you can always email families at clemson.edu and uh, we'll be happy to uh, answer any questions that you have. Again, we'll take time at the end to answer questions. Uh, I assure you that any unanswered questions that we can't get to today because of time constraints, uh, we will get back to you. We will follow up with you offline. The great thing about Zoom webinar is it records your name and email um, information so we can, along with your questions, so we can follow up with you offline. So we will uh, get back to you within a couple of business days. All right, we have got a great lineup for you. So we'll go right into introductions of our panelists. Um, so um, up first is Pam Davis. Good evening, everyone. I'm so excited to be here with you this evening. My name is Pam Davis and I'm the Director of Campus Reservations and Events. All right, up next, uh, Gary Weiser. Good evening, I'm Dr. Gary Weiser. I am the Assistant Dean of Students and the Director for Fraternity and Story Life. All right, uh, Jacob. Hi y'all, my name is Jacob Frankovich. I use he, his, him pronouns, and I am one of the associate directors in the Harvey and Lucinda Gamp Multicultural Center. Amanda. Hi everyone, my name is Amanda Royo, and I am the uh, graduate assistant of multicultural programming at the Gantt Center. Victoria. Good evening, I'm Victoria. I work for the Department of Campus Recreation as the associate director for member services and aquatics. 
Uh, Miles. Good evening, everyone. My name is Miles Ferret. I serve as the Director of Student Involvement in the Center for Student Leadership and Engagement. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Kate Radford. I serve as the Director of Leadership Education and Development in the Center for Student Leadership and Engagement. Excellent. Thanks, Kate. All right, Naomi. Hi, I'm Naomi Horner, and I'm one of the Orientation Ambassadors. I'm a rising sophomore in Language and International Health major. All right, thank you. Kaylin. Hello, everyone. My name is Kaylin Rico. I am a junior biological sciences major. All right, uh, thank you. Next up, Steve. Hi, everyone. My name is Dee Renee. I'm an orientation ambassador for the summer. I am a rising junior and a um, political science major, as well as a um, philosophy and women's leadership minor. Excellent. Thanks, Dee. Yasmia. Good evening, everyone. My name is Yasmir Evans. I'm a third year biological sciences major and psychology minor from Orangeburg, South Carolina, and I am also a 2021 orientation ambassador. Excellent. Thank you. So we got a great lineup of panelists for you. So we're going to jump right in. So up first is campus reservation and events with Pam Davis. All right. Thank you, Josh. Uh, again, my name is Pam Davis, and I'm the director of Campus reservations and events here at Clemson. So to give you a little bit of an overview of who we are, um, in campus reservations and events, our department's primary mission is to provide our guests and clients with exceptional customer service. We also work with our clients to provide event coordination and we manage three, soon to be four, buildings and over 10 outdoor spaces on campus. We do have approximately 60 students that we employ, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later, um, but we strive to, to provide them with a hands-on experience as they serve as our front lines and they get such real world experience in their employment with us. It's also very important to us that the spaces we manage are inclusive, accessible, and innovative. And just to give you a sense of what we are focused on in campus reservations and events, I've included our departmental values there that you can see. Um, and you may be wondering, I say the word clients, who are our clients and our guests? Um, there are students, there are faculty and staff, and sometimes there are guests and groups that may not even be affiliated with Clemson, but come on campus to reserve space for meetings or events. So what venues do we manage on campus? The Hendricks Student Center is a place that we hope your students will spend a great deal of time. We have seven reservable spaces in Hendrix that are used by student organizations to hold meetings, have events. We have stu two student areas that can be used for studying or student meetings. And we also have a food court, Einstein bagels, and of course, Clemson's famous ice cream at 55 Exchange. There are multiple departments housed in Hendrix, including ours. Um, also the Center for Career and Professional Development, Tiger One, Advocacy and Success, as well as retail businesses such as Wells Fargo Bank and the computer store. Um, the Barn Center is such a beautiful building inside and out. Uh, it was once an old sheep barn, but it was renovated and reopened in 2017. And it is a venue that can also be reserved by student organizations for events or meetings. Um, and it's also the home of Unites, which is our late night programming team in, in Josh's department. And so I hope you will learn more about Unites and please encourage your students to attend their programs that are very popular on campus. Memorial Auditorium is the auditorium. It's actually located in Tillman Hall. Um, we manage the auditorium. It's a space that also has a rich history. I don't have time tonight to go into it, but it has a really rich history on um, Clemson's campus. Um, it is used as a classroom in the daytime. And in the evenings and weekends, it's used by student organizations to host meetings. Um, we also have events, performances, speakers, concerts, and shows in there. It, uh, the max occupancy is around 850, so it is one of the larger auditoriums on campus. Uh, we're very excited that the Samuel J. Cadden Chapel will be opening in the spring of 2022, um, hopefully January. And this chapel will provide our students a space for prayer, reflection, and meditation. It will also be available for religious, spiritual, and cultural student organizations to reserve uh, space for their meetings and programs. 
So please encourage your students to listen out for more information on the Cadden Chapel and its opening, because it is gonna be such a beautiful space um, and such an asset to our campus when it does open. In addition to those indoor venues, we also manage quite a few outdoor spaces, um, which I've listed here, and they're very popular on campus for student events, programs, as well as spaces for students just to come, study, relax, or hang out with friends. Um, these, are, these are places, if you've, if you've been to, to visit Clemson, Bowman Field um, is very busy with Frisbee and, and different sports and games and students just studying and, and enjoying um, time there. It's kind of the front yard to Clemson. Um, and also all of the other spaces that are mentioned there are very popular for um, different events and activities to take place. So hopefully your students will not have a problem finding those on campus. I wanted to mention three of our functional areas in our department and mostly so you can understand who we are, but, but more importantly, so that you can encourage your students to, to become a part of our department. Um, we have a reservation services team and, and they're a team that accepts and processes any reservation requests that come in. So if a student organization wants to reserve a space for a meeting or for an event, they start with our reservation services team. Um, and then that reservation process moves along to our event services team. And, and those students and professional staff work hand in hand, one on one with our clients to ensure that their event is coordinated successfully and safely. Um, also getting appropriate approvals and making sure that appropriate campus partners are involved. Um, and then last but certainly not least is our operations team. And there are students and staff who are on the ground with the client, usually day of the event. They're supporting the event with technology, equipment and furniture. And they're also our student staff that are actually managing opening and closing our buildings and ensuring that um, our guests and our clients are safe. Um, like I mentioned before, we do um, employ 60 students. Um, so as you can see, we, to be honest, we have seven professional staff in all that we do, and we have about 60 employees that are students. And so they get such real world hands-on experience. And we do that because we know that that is so important for them to be prepared for their next chapter um, after Clemson. Um, it's our priority that our student employees receive that opportunity to grow, to learn, to develop as leaders, and to take risk. Um, we, we have to allow them to take those risks because that's how we learn. And so we're there to guide them, um, but also make sure that they're, they're not just clocking in and clocking out every day, but instead they're really getting that rich experience with us. And obviously we truly could not do it without them. So we love our, our team of student employees. In addition to those day-to-day -day functions, we also get the opportunity to plan larger events on campus. Um, just a few of those here. Our department um, does plan the logistics for graduation and doctoral hooding. Um, we also have a lot of events that come to campus that we get to be involved in, and I've, I've mentioned just a few there. Um, again, our student employees, we couldn't, we couldn't do these events without them. So it's really awesome to see them get to work behind the scenes of some of these events. Um, they learn so much in their involvement. We've had even had students get offered internships from companies like ESPN and Disney because of the access and opportunity to work alongside staff from those, from those companies. Um, and, and again, to get that behind the scenes look at how large events are produced is such an awesome experience, especially for, we have students of all majors, um, but especially for our students who are interested in event planning or marketing or a business related field. Um, but we also have a lot of our engineer students come in and, and work with our operations team because they're the ones running our sound booth and, and handling all of our AV and tech equipment. <clears throat> So here's how you can find us. Um, if I have more time, I would love to go on and on about all the really cool things we do, but I wanna give you an opportunity to, to look us up, uh, reach out. I've even put my contact information there. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, so whether your student comes and works with us in campus reservations or event, has an opportunity to attend a meeting or go to an event in one of our spaces, or just comes in to study, eat, or visit, we are here and we are so looking forward to having your student on campus this August. Thanks so much for your time.
Hey, uh, good evening again. Uh, my name is Gary Wazer and I am the Assistant Dean of Students and the Director for Fraternities for Real Life. And I'm excited to preview uh, the options to join our Fraternities 40 community here at Clemson. Just to give you an overview of our membership, uh, this actual spring semester, we had the record high membership um, within our community. But in the fall, you can see we were just under uh, 5,200 students. And over the last five years, we have grown tremendously. Uh, almost 14% uh, have uh, more students have joined our community. We make up about 25% of the undergraduate uh, student population in our fraternities and sororities. Of the membership, just under 52% are from out of state. And of the overall undergraduate population, 33.5% of our women are members of our sororities and 15.8% of the undergraduate men are members of fraternities. So we have 47 fraternities and sororities that are under fraternity and sorority life. Uh, these are all of the, uh, the national social fraternities and sororities. We do not oversee any of the professional or service uh, co-ed organizations that also are here at Clemson. So of these four uh, governing councils, uh, starting with the College Panhellenic Association, we have 12 sororities that average uh, 288 women. Within our inner fraternity council, we have 22 fraternities that range anywhere between uh, uh, groups as low as 20 up until about 120 members. And we have two culturally based fraternities uh, and sorority councils. Uh, first with the multicultural Greek council that consists of um, historically Latinx and Asian fraternities and sororities. And then our national Panhellenic council, which is the national um, uh, historically African-American fraternities and sororities. Do want to add that even though um, all of our uh, organizations have a different cultural founding, uh, they are open to all members, no matter what your identity is. Next, we're going to focus on how to join our organizations, starting with the College Panhellenic Association. You can see that registration is currently open and closes on August the 6th. Uh, this is a hard uh, deadline uh, that students need to meet, and there is a registration cost of $155 to participate in Panhellenic recruitment. Uh, there's a lot of information located on the Panhellenic website at clemsonpanhellenic.com. And you can see this, uh, the dates below. Uh, we are splitting recruitment over two weekends in August and all the rounds will be in person with the exception of round one, which will be over pre-recorded videos. Next with the Interfraternity Council, uh, you can see that registration is open currently through Friday, August the 20th. There is a $50 registration fee for men to go through uh, the IFC recruitment process. And more information is located at clemson-ifc.com. Fall rush will take place uh, from uh, August the 28th through September the 2nd. Uh, and we will have a spring recruitment that will usually happen uh, in mid-January, but for the fall recruitment dates, uh, you can see uh, those dates as well. For both Panhellenic and IFC, first semester freshmen are eligible, eligible to join uh, those two councils. Next with our Multicultural Greek Council, they have a process for uh, uh, bringing in new members called uh, intake, uh, and also some groups uh, do hold a traditional recruitment process. But all these organizations hold individual recruitment processes uh, versus I've seen Panhellenic that have a council-based uh, joint recruitment process. Students are, who are interested in joining an MGC organization can, uh, can look at uh, information on their interest meetings uh, when they will hold recruitment. But a good chance for them to get to know MGC organizations are at Tiger Prowl and Grill and Greet in the fall semester. You can find out more information on our MGC organizations at clemsonmgc.org. Next with our National Panhellenic Council, they also have a membership intake process where all eight of our organizations hold independent processes. They will usually only hold uh, intake once per academic year, so they need to be aware of uh, when the organizations will post, usually on social media, about when their interest and informational meetings will be held. We do want to note that there is an NPHC organization orientation meeting that will happen on September the 5th in the Hendricks meeting rooms. All students who are interested in joining an NPHC organization will need to go to one of the orientation meetings before they are able to pursue membership in an NPHC fraternity or sorority. You can find more information about our eight organizations at nphcclemson.com. 
We are excited that our fraternity and sorority community will grow this year. We are adding two more organizations uh, to our community. First with the College Panhellenic Association, Delta Gamma is returning to Clemson. They previously uh, had a chapter here in the 80s uh, through the 2000s and we are excited for their return to Clemson and they will begin recruiting members after Panhellenic's primary recruitment process in August. Also, the Interfraternity Council is working with Zeta Beta Tau, which had a chapter here in the early 2000s. They are a national, uh, historically Jewish fraternity, and they will be looking to start an interest group process this fall. I want to highlight a few of our academic uh, achievements this past year. Um, in the fall 2020 semester, our all fraternity story GPA was a 3.432. You can see how many chapters exceeded a 3.0 and also our members. So academics is a huge value of our fraternity and sorority experience. And we're really excited about the record high GPAs that you see for our overall uh, GPAs within the community, Panhellenic, IFC, NPHC, and also our new member averages for Panhellenic and IFC. Within our graduation rates, you can see uh, that um, with the the 2014 cohort, uh, over 92% of our students graduated within six years. And then with our retention rates from fall 19, that over 96% of those members who joined that semester, um, who were first time freshmen, returned to Clemson their sophomore year. And this past academic year, we are very excited that uh, our fraternities and sororities had a record high philanthropic uh, achievement by raising over $800,000 for their national and local philanthropic efforts. Next on the slide, you can see the, uh, the average cost of dues per governing council. You will notice that the first semester of membership is more expensive than the, uh, than the subsequent semesters. Uh, the main reason for that is the, the initiation fee and other national fees that they have to pay during that first semester. And uh, we are proud to say that it is more affordable to join a fraternity or sorority at Clemson compared to our, our peer institutions within the ACC and the SEC. Part of that is because of the housing requirements um, at Clemson that we don't have the, the large um, the housing uh, model that other schools have. And I'll talk about that in just one moment. But also want to note that we do have a $60 FSL fee that all students pay on their tuition bill each semester that goes towards staffing and programming efforts for the community. Next, in regards to fraternity and sorority housing, we do have opportunities for 23 of our groups to have residence hall space, either in the fraternity and sorority quad or the Bryan Mall. If your student joins an organization that has residential space, uh, historically they will join, um, or if they join their freshman year, they will be looking at moving onto their halls sophomore years, depending on the number of bed spaces uh, that the organizations have. The, uh, the, the, the fees to live on campus uh, will be on the tuition bill and that'll be separate from the, the fraternity's 40 dues that they will pay. Finally, here's our contact information. Um, you can see all of our different social media uh, platforms that you can find us at. Um, but I do want to note the, the FSL virtual orientation page on our fraternity's for life website, which is uh, clemsongreeklife.com. If you select virtual orientation, you'll be uh, taken to a page that has um, PowerPoint presentations for, uh, for all of our fraternities and sororities and a departmental overview that goes more in depth on what I have presented tonight. So if you have any further uh, questions, you can feel free um, to put them in the Q&A section or email us at greek at clemson.edu. Thank you. Hi everyone, Jacob again uh, to talk about the Gamble Multicultural Center, a little bit about who we are and what we do. So you can see our mission here. I, I won't read it directly, but, but the Gamble Tate Cultural Center really strives to help shape a more inclusive and equitable space uh, for students of all social identities. Uh, the, the Multicultural Center is a space that um, will really do work around a variety of identities. So that can range from race and ethnicity to worldview, religion, spirituality, gender, sexuality, um, it really is a space that strives to be intersectional and, and inclusive in their work. Um, we, we do that by striving to enhance folks' intercultural competence to, to give people some of the knowledge and the skills 
um, needed to potentially have difficult conversations or to engage around hot topics. Um, we also do that through advocacy, uh, through challenging students to think critically, and as highlighted through experiential learning opportunities, which we'll delve into in a little bit more depth shortly. So some of the goals that we have that really guide the work that we do, that advocacy and support piece, you know, the Gantt Center is a physical space on campus, a space where students can come, they can ask questions, they can study, um, they can connect with our, our wonderful staff team, um, and really a space where people are hopefully can, can be themselves. Um, we also really strive to, to advocate for positive change on Clemson's campus and beyond to really help create those, those inclusive and equitable spaces. Uh, we help provide those opportunities for underrepresented and mar marginalized groups to see themselves um, on campus, to, to make sure that their identities are visualized, are represented. Um, we also have, uh, again, a, a ton of different programming that is both entertaining, that is engaging, that is um, centered on identity and culture. And so you really have a wide range of ways to engage. Um, we provide students, as well as staff, faculty, um, with those opportunities to connect across difference and to really build those relationships. And we work with a variety of multicultural student organizations. And I'm going to turn it over to Amanda to talk a little bit more specifically about how we do this work and some of our programming efforts. All right, thank you, Jacob. Um, like everyone said, uh, like, like we said earlier, hi, my name is Amanda. Um, and basically, so how we meet all of these, uh, these goals and missions that Jacob has just talked about um, is that we really um, focus on a couple of things. The first one of those things being programming. Um, so like Jacob said, we like for students and for faculty to see themselves represented in this programming and by creating uh, programming such as things that we're working on like Hispanic Heritage Month, Black History Month and all of those things, um, we are able to do so and to really um, help the voices of the community um, come through. And these are events in, uh, and things that students of all different um, backgrounds and of all different places and faculty and staff can all participate in. Um, we also have intercultural competence training, which provides students, faculty, and staff opportunities to build skill sets and to engage across different identities and cultures in an effort to, be, uh, to gain a better understanding of, their self, of themselves and others. So, um, these are going to be trainings that, you know, help people kind of better understand, um, you know, each other across different identities on campus. Oh, how do I sit? There we go. Um, like I said, we also have a bunch of different um, really interesting and really fun activities and events to help us meet these goals. Um, some of these I've already mentioned, such as Hispanic Heritage Month, Black History Month, but we also have individual um, events such as Grill and Greet, which is a really fun event at the beginning of the year. It gets to meet a bunch of multicultural student organizations. Um, we also have the Donning of the Kente, which is um, a way to, I'm so sorry, <laughs> they haven't barked all day and now they're going to start barking. Um, which is a, a way to kind of recognize our multicultural student leaders <laughs> um, on campus. Um, we also have uh, various different student organizations that we advise and that we um, and that we help with throughout campus, like Latinos Unidos, like cultural ambassadors, um, Rainbow Fellowships, and the Clemson Black Student Union. Um, so yeah, now I'm going to turn it over to Jacob. So we just also want to quickly highlight that, that the Gantt Center is part of a larger division of inclusion and equity. And so while we are often uh, the folks who are, who are working with students most directly, there's a ton of other great work. Um, some of your students may be part of some of the college preparation outreach programs. These are the initiatives that are really working with students even before they come to Clemson. These high school outreach programs like Tiger Alliance, like Emerging Scholars. Um, the division also includes some of the work around compliance with access and equity. Um, you know, these would be spaces uh, for students and staff and faculty if there is a bias incident on campus, um, or if there are Title IX issues, you know, these are staff members who are trained to really provide that support and provide the advocacy that's needed. Uh, we have some folks who do specific Hispanic outreach, um, our diversity and education piece, as well as strategic planning that happens, um, really helping to shape again, an entire Clemson community and campus that is really working on, on being more equitable uh, across the board. Also quickly note that there's alumni relations, there's a, a faculty development branch, uh, an amazing piece, the Charles H. Houston Center, which does research and scholarship. 
um, as well as several presidential commissions, which as you can see, focus on some different identities specifically. So as noted, while the Gantt Center is, is often at the forefront uh, with some of this work around identity and equity, it is by no means the only group, the only team. Um, and I would of course highlight for that for all of the other folks who are on this call as well. Um, so you can of course visit the Gantt Center website for more information. Uh, reach out to us via email, or we're always happy to answer questions. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. So I'm excited to talk to you about uh, a couple of resources that are available for uh, your students to get involved here on campus. So. The first of which is uh, TigerQuest. So TigerQuest is a resource that's available to anyone uh, with Clemson login credentials that is the uh, home for the contact information and details about all 500 plus of our student organizations. So, um, and it has a very usable search bar. So if one of your students is interested and knows that they have a group in particular that they wanna join, I would encourage them to go into TigerQuest and um, to search for search for that group if they know that they you know played soccer in high school and they want to check that out they want to connect with a faith based organization um, whatever the case may be they can go to tire quest and they can look for that they've also completed as a part of their virtual orientation experience they've completed a tool called place finder uh, which matches them specifically with resources on campus um, and so they have an email uh, so if they just search in their email their clemson email for the word place finder they're going to find information uh, they're going to find information about uh, about resources that they've been specifically matched to based on their interest values and uh, and reasons for coming to campus. As far as campus opportunities go, um, there's a couple of things that I want to highlight in particular. Um, the first of which is Tiger Prowl. So Tiger Prowl is our student involvement fair, which will be occurring on Monday, August 16th uh, in the football stadium, which we're excited uh, to be hosting. Um, there will be um, the vast majority of undergraduate serving student organizations will be there. And so your students will have the opportunity to go and talk to them. That's going to be a part of, uh, that's going to be a part of their programming. So they'll, um, unless they have a uh, class commitment, they, they will be taken there by their, um, by uh, their orientation leaders. So that'll be uh, really exciting. And uh, so they're going to have an opportunity if they, you know, want to do sort of some exploring on Tiger Quest, but they don't want to reach out, uh, then uh, they can go and uh, they can go and meet with folks in person at Tiger Prowl. Uh, another way to contact those 500 plus student organizations that we have, about 90% of them have Instagram accounts. So if your students are more comfortable um, reaching out and finding more information about them there, they should be able to, uh, to find them there. Uh, Tiger Quest, in case they aren't able to find something they're looking for, Tiger Quest does have the, content, does have the Instagram information for all those student organizations as well. And then Finally, I wanted to mention uh, something that Pam talked about earlier, uh, the Unites events, which are in the Barn Center. Um, so this is a late night programming series that we have that occurs every uh, 10, uh, every Thursday and Friday night throughout the fall from 10 p.m. until 12 a.m. in the spring after football season, that will be Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And uh, so if your students are looking for things to do, if you're hearing them say things like, uh, you know, there's nothing to do or, um, uh, or um, I'm having a hard time finding something to do that align, you know, that aligns um, with my values and things that I'm interested in at night. Uh, Unites is going to be a great outlet for them. Um, we have about 3,000 students that go through Unites every year, and um, it, it really becomes a special part of many people's communities. So I'd really recommend that as, as an outlet. Great. So Miles talked to you a little bit about student involvement. I'm going to talk to you about a second pillar of our center, which is leadership, education, and development. Um, we think about leadership, education, and development sort of in two ways. So we break that out by community leader development, um, which is really think about our community service, sort of community engagement directed efforts. Um, so it is the way that we as a campus exemplify our commitment to our local community. It helps to encourage students' lifelong citizenship, um, really focused on us working alongside community experts, community agencies, and our local community to create impactful change. Um, and then the other way that we think about leadership education development is through student leader development. And that's really about 
focusing in and preparing our students to lead and create a really vibrant and thriving campus community. Um, significant, I think, to say that it does have, um, we are very much interested and focused on how we prepare our students to be um, career ready. And so a huge part of that is their student leader development and being able to um, develop them, their skill sets, their ability to work with others, and their ability, again, to make change, whether that be in the student organization or in other um, facets of their life. Um, we really believe that every student, as you see on the slide there, should have a meaningful leadership experience before graduation. And so that is a huge priority for our team. Um, and we really have structured our, our center and our programs and services in order to provide that experience to every student on campus. Um, so although I have sort of broken these out as two different things, right, leader, community leader development, student leader development, they are housed in the same unit of leadership education and development, because we really see them as one and the same, we see them as um, impacting one another significantly. So um, you'll see here, we really believe that community engagement is a vehicle for developing leadership capacity, and we believe that leadership capacity is a vehicle for creating community change. So those things work in tandem. Um, we believe that our students by interacting and engaging in our local community are developing lots of skill sets. Um, and we hope that the skills we are developing in them on campus are helping them to make an impact and to be a part of our local community. Um, so to kind of just highlight a few of our programs that are available to your students, these are things that they can do as soon as they step on campus, uh, whether that's starting the summer and the fall. Um, so in the, the leadership learning sort of area, student leader development area, there's a few things I want to highlight. The first is the Certified Student Leader Program. That is a cohort-based program that students can go through. Um, it's a semester long. Um, it takes about 10 weeks for them to complete. So it's 10 weekly sessions in that cohort where they learn about things like values-based leadership and conflict and communication. Um, visioning and goal setting. So some of those, what we would consider foundational leadership skills um, that then hopefully launches them into involvement on campus or in their local community to practice and execute those skills. Um, the Engage Leadership Program is um, a series of four week long programs where we focus in on a specific leadership topic. So we'll offer four of those this coming year, two in the fall, two in the spring. Um, and this year we have things lined up like storytelling for social change, um, where we'll spend four weeks talking about that or leadership in a digital landscape, where we'll spend four weeks talking about that. So again, weekly commitment, a little bit more short term than the certified student leader program, just four weeks that students can kind of commit to and learn about a specific leadership topic. Um, and then I also put on there our Women in Leadership Conference. That is an annual conference that we do. It'll be offered March 6th this year, so 2022. Um, that conference has um, happened on Clemson's campus, I think now for about 12 years. So a pretty long legacy of um, celebrating women in leadership on our campus. Um, in terms of community engagement, lots of ways um, to do that. Um, some uh, informally, so we have relationships with a ton of community partners in the area. We love for students to come by our office and say, hey, I wanna go do service. I have two hours on Tuesdays, who might need me? And we can help connect them. Um, but we also have formal programming to help connect our students with the local community. Um, the first thing I would highlight, the thing that's gonna happen sort of first in the academic year is the fall in day of service. That'll happen this year on October 23rd. It's our day of service, campus-wide day of service, where we provide transportation for students and take them out to a variety of community agencies to do service for a few hours and get to know our local area, learn about some of the needs that exist in our local community, um, and give back for a few hours. So we hope you'll encourage your students to participate in that um, event. We also do a spring day of service centered around the MLK holiday, so part of the MLK commemorative services. Um, or week of celebration. Um, we do that on that Monday. So it's a day on instead of a day off for our students to go out and participate in service in our local community. And then Tiger Serve is, is really the umbrella name for our, our individual days of service that we do throughout the year. So we'll take some Saturdays and, and identify a community partner that has a project that they need done. Um, and we'll take a group of students out again, provide transportation um, and connect them with that agency. And then the last thing I want to highlight is our regional and international community engagement. So we do a lot in the Clemson area, and I would extend that Clemson area to mean um, sort of the surrounding communities. So all the way up into Greenville, Oconee County, Pickens County, Anderson. 
Um, but we also do service at a, a distance. So we send students off and throughout alternative break program to do service during fall break, winter break, and spring break. Um, and that's an opportunity for students to really spend one of those breaks from school um, to go out and to learn about another community, to engage in service, to learn about a social issue in a little bit more of an in-depth um, way. So we pick a location and we pick a social issue and students focus on that week um, on that issue and engage with a variety of different community partners to learn more about that and learn about how um, for example, um, how a community addresses food insecurity and how um, a variety of community partners might work together to do that. And so students um, are able to serve with those organizations um, in another community and hopefully bring that knowledge back to our Clemson area. So we um, do most of those within a driving distance. So um, throughout the Southeast, but we do have two international experiences that we offer as well. One's the Dominican Republic and then another one where we partner with Victoria's department, Campus Recreation to um, Dominica. And this is just some contact information. A lot of what I have um, shared with you in terms of opportunities um, can be found on our social media throughout the academic year. We'll post about that there, or you can find it on our website, um, or you can always email us at csle at clemson.edu for more information. We hope to see your students. Hello again, everyone. Um, so Campus Recreation, I'm gonna go through a little bit about our different facilities, programs that we have. Um, and then our student employment opportunities. We are one of the largest employers of students on campus employing something like 400 plus students. Um, so our main kind of hub for campus recreation is Fike Recreation Center. It's been around a long time. If any of you out there are alumni, you've probably either been to Fike, heard of Fike, or know the old Fike Field House. Um, so that building is still there. We've got uh, an eight lane indoor lap pool, um, indoor track, We've got all the free weight, cardio, selectorized equipment that you can imagine. Um, in addition to a new functional training space, group fitness studios, um, and a physical therapy practice that is contracted out but is inside our building. Kind of the smaller satellite to Fike is our Dalk Hills facility. So on the second floor of the hub building, we've got a fitness facility. And kind of, like I said, a little sibling to Fike where we've got cardio equipment, free weight equipment, selectorized equipment, um, a functional training space here as well, a dedicated cycling studio that's really cool that's got black lights and neons and kind of like a cycle bar or soul cycle type um, atmosphere here, as well as a really awesome group fitness studio that gives you beautiful views of campus. Out um, just across the lake, we've got our Snow Family Outdoor Fitness and Wellness Complex. And that complex as a whole has artificial turf fields, so the Leconte Family Field, as well as our championship fields. Um, the Leconte Family Field is traditionally used for club sport practices. So if your student is interested in joining a club sport uh, that plays on a field, they will probably have practice there at one point or another. Um, and then the championship fields are traditionally used for open recreation, drop in, play soccer, anything like that on a field, um, as well as our intramurals. They kind of get housed there. Also out at the complex is our Andy Quattlebaum Outdoor Education Center. So that just opened um, about a year ago, brand new outdoor education center. We'll talk a little bit about more about what is housed there and what it's used for. Um, and then we also have our beachfront out there and some sand volleyball courts. And it is also home to our sailing and water sports clubs. And then at the Andy Quattlebaum Outdoor Education Center, we've got a bike shop, gear rentals, um, either for on-site use or off-site use. It's got a multi-purpose room upstairs um, that is used for group fitness classes, small events, things like that. And then outside, we've got this beautiful fire pit as well with some lights and stuff like that that you can use. And then when it comes to programming, um, we obviously wanna get as many students involved as we possibly can. And um, so kind of broke it down into our four main types of programming. So starting with fitness and wellness, we have over 75 to 100 different group fitness classes each week, ranging from things like yoga to high intensity interval training classes, circuit training classes, uh, metabolic conditioning, bar, dance classes, kind of everything under the sun that you can think of, we have in some sort of group format. Additionally, we have F45, um, which is a functional training national or international chain started in Australia. Um, but we have that as an offering here as well. 
um, for CORE. Um, CORE is our outdoor recreation and education program. So they run all of our organized trips. If your student is going to be living on campus, I highly encourage them to talk to their residence halls. A lot of times residence halls will plan and organize trips that are free for students. Um, but then outside of that, we also just have trips that are open for students to register for. There are small fees associated with some of those trips, but they cover things like entry to parks, meals while you're on trips, gas for trips, and things like that. So we try and keep those costs as low as possible. And those trips range from anything from backpacking, whitewater rafting, um, camping, mountain biking, and they can be either longer weekend trips or over spring break, we do a week long trips. So we go out to Moab and go mountain biking, or in the winter, we go to Steamboat Springs and do a ski and snowboard trip for a week um, to just day long trips where you drive to Sugar Mountain or, you know, do a snow tubing trip or something like that, or just day hikes around the area. We're in a really great area here in Clemson where there's just so much to do in the outdoors world. You can also rent gear with CORE. Um, so I mentioned you can either rent gear to use on site. So things like kayaks, canoes, stand up paddle boards. Um, you can rent all of that out at Andy's and kind of hang out there on the beach. Or if you wanna go on or your student wants to go on their own outdoor adventure, they can rent everything under the sun that they would need. So tents, cook stoves, sleeping pads, sleeping bags, bear canisters, all of that. They have all of that stuff. Next, we'll talk about kind of club sports and intramural sports. Um, so club sports and intramurals, I guess first I'll talk about the differences. So club sports are their own unique organizations. So they are their own governing bodies. They have dues and fees that are going to be associated with them. Some of them will have like tryouts to be a part of the team. Um, whereas on the flip side, intramural sports is more about just getting out there, having a good time, maybe trying a sport that you've never tried before open to every single Clemson student who wants to join and it's totally free. Some of our club sports are things like air rifle, basketball, um, cycling, disc golf, equestrian, ice hockey, men's and women's lacrosse, um, all different kinds of stuff. A lot of our clubs or, or clubs will be out at Tiger Prowl and um, that was already kind of mentioned. So definitely encourage your students to go check them out at Tiger Prowl. All of their um, Tiger Quest links are also on our Campus Rec website. So if you're interested in kind of a shortcut to find them on Tiger Quest, you can visit our Campus Rec website as well. And then last but not least, intramural sports, like I said, free to everybody. Um, things like flag football, volleyball, um, longer seasons that'll go throughout the semester. Um, and then we also do run some smaller weekend tournaments like spike ball, cornhole, tennis, things like that. Um, and then lastly, we'll talk about student employment. So as I mentioned, we are one of the largest employers of students on campus. All of our facilities are pretty much completely student run. So we hire for everything from aquatic specialists uh, that oversee our pool to students that lead trips or rent gear, students to run our climbing wall, our group fitness instructors, all of the folks that run our facility, our welcome center staff that greet you when you come in our doors. All of those are student employees. Um, so if you want your student to help out or make a little spending money, um, definitely encourage you to have them check out Campus Recreation as employment. Um, and then just a reminder, in order to be hired by the university, we do have to see physical copies of their social security card. Um, so just make sure if they're looking for an on-campus employment opportunity to send that with them. We can't see copies, we have to see the actual card. So um, and again, my name is Victoria. My information is on our website. So feel free to reach out if you have any additional questions. All right, thank you, Victoria. And uh, Victoria, there are a couple of questions in the, the Q&A feature, if you don't mind uh, answering those for us. Uh, at this moment in time, we're gonna uh, turn it over to some of our uh, orientation ambassadors who are outstanding student leaders um, who uh, help facilitate our new student orientation program, uh, who we wouldn't be able to do the program without. Uh, so Caitlin, I'm gonna turn it over to you as team lead to kind of facilitate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Um, like I said, my name is Kayla Enrico, um, and this is my second year on the orientation team. I serve as a team leader. Um, and so my overall um, word of advice for college in general would be in college, you either run the day or the day runs you. Um, and then in regards to student life, I would say just get involved. Definitely encourage your student to get involved because it allows you to build such a sense of community on campus. 
Um, I know personally, my first year, I felt not necessarily lonely. I just, I didn't feel like I fit in any club or anything like that. But like after reaching out and getting involved in different student organizations, I found that it was a lot better and it was definitely helped me being away from home to have that sense of community. So definitely encourage your student to get involved. Um, I can definitely um, hand it off to one of the OAs. Um, Naomi, would you like to go ahead and go? Yeah, totally. Um, hey guys, so my name is Naomi Horner and I'm a um, rising sophomore language international health major. Um, my, I think my main word of advice for students is to not be afraid to go to things like the dining hall or events alone. I know when I first started, I especially was very worried about maybe people judging me if I went to the dining hall alone, but really no one does. And actually going to places alone is such a great way to meet new people. It allows you to talk to so many people without like staying in your little bubble. And as Kaylin said, also just get involved with everything and anything under the sun. Dee, would you like to go? Of course. Hi, everyone. My name is Dee Renee. I'm a rising junior, um, political science major, philosophy, and women's leadership minor. And my word of advice would be to not spend all of your pop points in the first month of the semester. Um, I definitely did this. Um, pop points are kind of like regular dollars. You're able to use them on off um, on campus um, dining options, kind of. Uh, so you can use them at Chick Fil A, Starbucks. Um, of that nature. Um, and by November, I was kind of like, oh, I have no more pop points and I can't get a coffee. So definitely um, don't spend all your pop points all at one place. Yes, Mir. So my word of advice for incoming students will definitely be the key to balance, to having fun, to getting your studies done is investing in the daily planner. Um, it is the key to my success as a college student at Clemson. It allows me to stay involved while excelling in all my classes. Just having a daily planner, setting out those times throughout the day, no matter how small I think it may be, I put it in the planner. So definitely invest in one. All right. Well, thank you, Orientation Investors, for sharing uh, those words of advice um, with our, uh, our audience here. At this point in time, we've got a few minutes left. If there are any questions, now would be a great time. Any outstanding questions, that would be a great time to drop those in the Q&A uh, feature. I know uh, Victoria has answered a few from Campus Rec, uh, but any questions about any parts of the presentation? Great question. Um, there was a question that's come in. Um, how can you go about finding a job on campus? Uh, as, as how, do you, how do you get hired as a student employee? Um, individual departments, um, both on the academic side and on the student affairs side have many opportunities. Most of those um, employment opportunities can actually be found through our career center. Uh, so they're posted uh, through our career, um, our Center for Career and Professional Development. Um, the easiest way to do it, to be honest, is just go to the Clemson website, the search box, just do the Career Center. It should be the first link that pops up and there should be uh, links for our student employment opportunities on campus. Students, do you, uh, our student leaders orientation ambassadors, do you have any other words of wisdom on finding a job on campus? Um, I personally, the only job I've had so far at Clemson has been serving as an orientation ambassador, but I know that sometimes, um, in your emails if like the specific college your student is enrolled in is looking for interns or other like job positions they may reach out via email so definitely make sure they're checking their email to make sure that they see the most um, important information as soon as possible. That's an excellent point uh, Kaylin. Uh, many of our positional student leadership roles that are paid not all of them are paid so uh, like our resident assistant roles uh, orientation ambassador roles, those are communicated out, mass marketed out to the student body uh, for positions like that. Um, 
there's a question about how does a student get more information about becoming an orientation ambassador, a tour guide, or resident assistant. Again, check that email. Students can check that email. Uh, check social media. Follow those departments on campus. Um, we'll be sending and posting those things widely. Um, I know that for us, uh, as the ones who hire the orientation ambassadors, we try to hit almost every avenue possible on our campus so that students are aware uh, that we are recruiting and hiring for orientation ambassadors. All right. Uh, well, we're coming up on our time, and I want to thank, um, I hope you join me in thanking our panelists for taking the time to present today. Uh, excellent opportunity. So a couple of closing remarks uh, regarding student life and involvement. Uh, Clemson has a ton of opportunities for students to get connected on campus. There truly is uh, something for every student. Um, as parents and family members of our students, we encourage you just to kind of promote that. Uh, it's critically important for them to um, it's critically important for them to be involved on campus. Um, there's something for everyone. If they're at any point in time struggling to get connected, please reach out to the Center for Student Leadership and Engagement. One of our primary roles on this campus is to facilitate connections uh, to student involvement opportunities. We know that there's a lot, it can be overwhelming. And so what our staff are trained to kind of help students, uh, you know, evaluate their interests and values so that we can connect them directly to people and organizations on campus. So we're happy to do that. Uh, the first six weeks are critically important to a student's successful transition. Those first six weeks are really key. Um, and so as parents and families, we, we, we encourage you to support your student in that regard, asking them to get connected, asking them to be involved. Uh, they don't have to do everything all at once. Uh, I think one of our orientation ambassadors mentioned balance. Um, that, is, that certainly is important. Um, but most people can handle getting connected to at least one thing uh, we certainly don't want you to be over involved so balance is key but one thing will really make a difference um, in being successful here at clemson um, and so just want to leave you with that uh, again we're here to help if you have any questions uh, that come up after this session is over please reach out to us at cu families at clemson.edu we're happy to help we're so happy that you joined us thank you to our panelists um, and until we do this again go tigers <laughs> <laughs>